If we're gonna figure out how Batman would train in real life and create a full workout program that you can follow yourself, we're first gonna need to analyze the physical demands of being the Dark Knight. This is an incredibly important first step because the way our bodies respond and adapt to a certain type of training is very specific to the type of training itself. This is called the SED principle, specific adaptations to impose demands. Simply put, if I get you to jump a lot in your training program, you'll get better at jumping, but your arms won't get any bigger. Your training needs to be specific to the type of results that you want. And Bruce Wayne is a very busy guy with very limited amounts of time and energy. So we need to make sure he's training efficiently and getting the most bang for his buck when it comes to his workouts. And I'll tell you right now, Batman would have a huge problem training in real life, and we'll get to that later, but first we need to assess the physical demands of being Batman. This assessment of needs is the exact same thing I do whenever I'm onboarding a new personal training client. Typically with a client, I'll take them through a physical assessment and consultation to figure out their needs. But since I don't have access to Bruce Wayne, that's not going to be possible. But luckily for us, there's a near infinite amount of footage of the Dark Knight doing his thing. So let's get to work analyzing this to figure out how to train Batman. Okay, that was a lot, but I think we have everything we need. So here are the most common physical things Batman does while on the job. He runs, jumps, strikes, grapples, sprints, kicks, swims, carries, lifts, climbs, throws, balances, and reacts. Okay, that's a lot. To make things a little bit easier to analyze, I'm going to organize all of these into the different aspects of human performance that they fall under. This will make it much easier to design a program that addresses each and every one. So we've got six different categories, and because of the said principle, Batman would need to dedicate some of his training specifically to each of the six if he wanted to be highly proficient in all of them. Which, if I'm being honest, is a pretty tall order. Is it even possible for the human body to be highly adept in this many different ways? Well, actually, yes. And there's a whole sport built around being the master of all kinds of fitness. It's called cross. Fit. Every year, the top 40 male and female CrossFitters from around the world come together to compete in the CrossFit Games and find out who is the fittest man and woman alive. But there's a big twist that makes the CrossFit Games different than any other sporting event. The athletes have no idea what kind of events they'll be competing in. They might be doing one rep max deadlifts, competing in a triathlon, dragging some dead bodies around, or pushing around whatever this thing is. The point being, they never know what's coming, so they need to be ready for anything. Just like our caped crusader, Batman. If you're liking the video and want me to do one on how the Punisher would train in real life, like, subscribe, and comment Punisher down below. Now, of course, Batman isn't doing any of the silly stuff like kipping pull-ups or handstand walks, and we still need to address his martial arts training. But we can take a look at how high-level CrossFitters train to get an idea of how Batman would have to train in real life. And who's better to look at than the man who has won the title of World's Fittest Man five times, Matt Fraser. He's now retired from competitive CrossFit, but this is what his training looked like when he was prepping for the games. He would train six days a week, multiple times a day, and this is what a typical week of training would look like. So now let's break it down into the same categories we used earlier to organize all aspects of human performance Batman would need to be Batman. You can see that there's a lot of overlap here. So we can use Matt Fraser's training schedule as a solid baseline to start to figure out how Batman would have to train in real life. And of course, the big thing that Matt's program is missing is martial arts training. But before that, we need to address a huge problem that Batman would have in real life when it came to staying in peak physical shape. In real life, Batman would have next to zero time, let alone energy, to train. Matt Fraser's CrossFit Games training takes him six hours a day to complete, and after that, all he has energy to do is eat and sleep. Batman needs to stay sharp while fighting crime and taking on parademons for hours on end every single night. He can't burn himself out with heavy sets of back squats before going to fight the Joker. In real life, Batman would have to train like an in-season athlete, and since crime doesn't take a holiday, he's pretty much going to be in season forever. So in reality, Batman would need two training programs. One that would be done at the start of his career to get him to the point where he's in peak physical shape, and then a lower volume program that he would do during his time as Batman that would have to be designed to keep him performing as close to peak as possible while not putting enough stress on him to compromise his ability to do his job. So I've gone ahead and created two such programs, along with one that you can follow yourself, and that's going to be at the end of the video. So first comes the off-season program, aka the Batman Prep. This is when Bruce Wayne is first becoming Batman. He has all the time he needs to train in the martial arts with Ra's al Ghul, hit the gym, work on his bat skills, and cry about his parents. He would train six days a week, twice a day, with one day off to rest. And this is what his training schedule would look like. I've broken down his weight training into three different categories. Power, strength, and endurance. And here's an example workout of each one. Power is all about building explosive power and athleticism. So I'd have Batman doing a lot of power cleans, box jumps, kettlebell swings, and lateral med ball throws during this part of his training. Next is strength, which is all about building Bruce some brute strength. So 
So these workouts would focus around heavy back squats, deadlifts, farmer's carries, bench and shoulder press, and more. And finally, endurance. These workouts would more or less be prehab. They're in the program to make sure Batman isn't going to twist an ankle or, or blow out his ACL during his first night fighting crime in Gotham. So during these workouts, there'll be plenty of unilateral work, core work, shoulder conditioning, and more. And then once Bruce is in tip-top shape, it's time for him to get out onto the streets and get some vengeance. But at this point, Batman's schedule would be jam-packed with appointments beating up mentally ill clowns, so he'd have very little time to hit the gym. So during his in-season program, he's going to train like an in-season athlete and do two weight training sessions a week to maintain his strength, continue his prehab, and most likely do a good amount of rehab as well. Then you'll have one day a week dedicated to refining his martial arts skills. Luckily, he'll be getting a ton of cardio and MMA practice while he's in the field, so we won't need to dedicate too much time outside of that. And finally, what you've all been waiting for, your very own Batman training program. This is a five-day week program that is geared towards improving your all-around athleticism while building muscle. So that's how Batman would train in real life. Let me know if you have any questions. Now go check out who did a better job prepping for the role of Batman, Christian Bale or Ben Affleck, and I'll see you there.